Again, your phone calls are coming up, but I'm going to break down the latest on the immigration bill in total detail as it unfolds. 1,200 pages. They've had a couple days to try to read it. It is stimulus programs, the Democratic Party, to illegal aliens, giant free giveaways, uh, just a total sellout of the country, legalizing felons. Uh, it's basically everything they tried before. But even worse, and it's bipartisan criminality that's going on here. Because the globalists know they're all going to go to jail if we ever take America back. And so they desperately think they're going to bring in a bunch of foreigners and hype them up uh, to, to, you know, to voting to take our guns. That'll just cause a civil war. And again, I talked to the, quote, immigrant community. They're waking up. So humanity more and more is coming together. I want to get to this clip because I mentioned it. Uh, it it's, it's so outrageous to have Glenn Greenwald for The Guardian, an American, engaging in real journalism, and to have David Gregory, who goes to the same school as Obama's kids, and has armed guards for his kids, but he wants our guns, asking, shouldn't Greenwald be arrested? Again, the press won't even go, say, investigate Hastings' death. I'm going into hiding. They're after me. I'm breaking the biggest story ever. Boom! An hour and a half after. And they, they ridicule Infowars.com. From the Daily Caller to New York Magazine to you name it, I'm bad for saying it should, foul play should be investigated. Then they kill the coroner that did the autopsy on Breitbart. And it's like, is it wrong to think maybe he was killed in foul play? Maybe he poisoned himself in ac on accident. Maybe Papa Smurf climbed up from a toadstool and put it in there. I, I mean, it, the mental gymnastics that we go through here to put up with this tyranny. Let's go to this clip. Um, to the extent that you have aided and abetted Snowden, even in his current movements, why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? I think it's pretty extraordinary that anybody who would call themselves a journalist would publicly muse about whether or not other journalists should be charged with felonies. The assumption in your question, David, is completely without evidence, the idea that I've aided and abetted him in any way. The scandal that arose in Washington before our stories began was about the fact that the Obama administration is trying to criminalize investigative journalism by going through the, the emails and phone records of AP reporters, That's accusing right. a Fox News journalist of the theory that you just embraced, being a co-conspirator with felony in felonies for working with sources. If you want to embrace that theory, it means that every investigative journalist in the United States who works with their sources, who receives classified information, is a criminal. And it's precisely those theories and precisely that climate that has become so menacing in the United States is why the New Yorker's Jane Mayer said investigative reporting has come to a standstill, her word, as a result of the theories that you just referenced. Well, the question of who's a journalist may be up to a debate with regard to what you're doing. Uh, that's and of enough. Course, anybody Who's Ladies and gentlemen, they passed the NDAA saying they can secretly arrest us and kill us whenever they want, but said, don't worry, we won't use it. And they are persecuting everything from the Tea Party to pro-lifers to Fox News and Greenwald, who's over in England. That's why there was a delay there in the question. And it shows what creeps they are. They tried to mainline torture, secret arrest, and now let's arrest the press when they report on the government committing crimes. And they are arresting members of the press. And then they have the corporate propaganda mouthpiece, David Gregory. Everybody should boycott his show. The entire press is out of cowering in fear. You want to know why tyranny is happening? Because America acts like a bunch of cowards. In the past, they wouldn't try this on journalists. They'd go public. They killed hundreds of journalists over JFK. It only made more journalists pile on. But you people think laying down is going to empower you. Please support this broadcast. Spread the word about InfoWars.com and InfoWars Show. And please uh, visit InfoWarsStore.com for all the amazing products. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones Radio Show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. There it is.
There's a battle taking place for the heart and soul of this republic. I'm going to have open phones throughout this hour. We're going to get into the latest on the immigration battle and the bill that we now are being able to read through, 1,200 pages. They're trying to pass today in the Senate. We'll get into Snowden. Got on a flight, got off of it. No one knows where he is. Uh, we'll get into calls for Glenn Greenwald to be arrested uh, by Mr. Gregory, just a traitor to America. The system's got its wagon circled right now because all their crimes are starting to come out. And they know the House of Cards could come down. That, that's what makes them so dangerous right now. And we'll get into the latest uh, on the economy and a bunch of police state news that I've got to get to. But right now, let's go to your calls. Thanks for holding. Dean in California, you're on the air. Uh, Alex, thank you. Can yes, you sir. hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I, I just got some static. Um, I had a question. I know that you've been talking about the eventual you know, false flag and martial law being declared at some point. The last couple of days, I've been reading some what I thought were kind of disturbing, you know, admittedly third-party hearsay posts on some different websites from people who claim that they have friends and family in different government agencies who have been telling him that they're ramping up the training specifically to deal with martial law and doing things like teaching them how to drive the, you know, large capacity FEMA buses. And, yeah, well, uh, see, this is how, this is why the public are slaves. It's on record they're training police nationwide to drive buses and for civil unrest. It's on record they basically trained the entire military, including mechanics, in riot control the last decade. They're always ramping up, buying more bullets, more armored vehicles, so that when they finally do it, everybody expects it because you've been doing dress rehearsal for it for, you know, a decade uh, or longer. Plus, they've got to train each new group. So it's an ongoing battle. And then people have family that do this, and then it just becomes a rumor. Kind of like geoengineering is a rumor when it's massively declassified that it, weather modifications going on. So, uh, but, but yes, the greatest level of gearing up to go after the American people that's ever happened is going on. And we have the training manuals. They've leaked and they've gone public with them uh, because we made them you know, obsolete, uh, their classification, that they're training for war with anti-New World Order people, i.e. Americans. People that are like, why does NATO run our military? Why are you training to take our guns? Why is the Federal Reserve private? Uh, we shouldn't have this going on. They're like, you are a traitor. You are a criminal. When they're obviously the traitors, and the criminals. Uh, I mean, this is a foreign banking group saying the military is the number one threat. While they use the military, see, it's like Hitler using the military to dominate Germany and surrounding areas, but while keeping them on the tightest leash and killing countless members of the, of the, of the main general staff. Because that's Stalin wiped out thousands of officers over and over again. I mean, tyrannies are a horrible thing. Uh, and they're horrible for the control freaks that set them up as well. Uh, this is the most unstable, horrible system you can live under. Unless you're offshore mega banks that are playing it off and who play the empires off against each other. Do you understand? I do. But the, the most disturbing part of the, the recent posts that I've been starting to see is that they mentioned a relatively specific time frame, like within the next... 30 to 60 days, there's going to be a quote unquote uh, electronic hack against the banking industry, which will allow them to do two things close the banks and take all our money and declare martial law and start whatever it is they're going well, to do. Well, I mean, I've talked about that for five years because uh, the, the Department of Cyber Command, which hasn't been passed by Congress but is funded on record, they're building all the command bases. As soon as their system goes online, is tested, most of it's already online, they will launch false flags on the web as an excuse to shut it down, take it over. That's what they always do. They stage the terror, then pose as the savior. So I don't know about a time frame, but that, that is their plan. The important thing about the Pro One filter today is that the material we use for removing fluoride and other heavy metals now we'll remove the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. There's no other fluoride reduction filter out there that will remove that type of fluoride. And it's extremely important because 
Today, we're hearing more and more cities are using that form of fluoride. We've been having medication forced on us through the water system for quite a while. Most people don't realize it. Most people don't realize the negative effects of fluoride. There's a wide range of health effects that are attributed to fluoride. Bottom line, why should somebody get this new Pro One Pro Pure filter? The reason to buy the Pro One, it's an all-in-one filter. It's convenient, easy to use. It doesn't require the add-on fluoride filter. And in addition, this filter removes the latest form of fluoride called hydrofluorosilicic acid. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. After I've gone through some calls, uh, I'm going to get into the repackaged amnesty bill allows Napolitano to nix border fence. She did everything she could in Arizona to destroy U.S. sovereignty as governor. Corker Amendment uh, permanently offers citizenship to those overstaying their visas. It just lets you illegally come here, and it's an open door to anybody that can get here. That's why even people like Crystal... The big neocon is against this, and they go, well, you supported it in the past. Folks, this is the complete gutting. I mean, this is, no country's ever done this. Just anybody wants to come here, come here on a visa. We're making the visas. You can get them in a week instead of a month now. Any country, just come here. It's free. Ah, I mean, it, it is the globalists just like hail marrying the ball to try to bring in as many people as they can to bankrupt the country. Even the neocons that are the ones that have tried to do this before are, are turning against it because it is crazy. I mean, it is crap. I've been going over this bill this morning. I spent about an hour trying to go over Sessions. Senator Sessions broke down what Sessions to look at, and I was looking at it. I, I mean, I cannot believe this thing. I saw an amendment in there where felons just sign a pledge, and then they're allowed to become citizens, and on and on and on. This is unbelievable. So I'm going to be getting into all that. Head spinning. Um, but Rand Paul, as I told you, he's for reasonable path to citizenship. It, it's hard to become a citizen. It takes 10, 15, 20 years. It's made to where you don't want to become legal. And I support more immigrants to the country if they aren't immediately put on welfare. I mean, uh, but and just like Rand Paul said, this is, this is unreasonable. He's not going to be part of it. I trusted Rand Paul. He's never let me down, and he, and he did the right thing. IRS sent $46 million in refunds at one Atlanta address, ladies and gentlemen. But the House said it had 23,000 people living at it. And again, I saw a story a few years ago, I guess it was about a year ago, here in Austin, 80-plus million to one address. <laughs> And none of it's enforced, and nobody goes to jail because they are allowed to launder the money through local banks. And that's come out. The banks, folks, are the enemy. The foreign banks that have American names like Wells Fargo and J.P. Morgan, they are all above the law, ladies and gentlemen. Schumer predicts mass demonstrations of House blocks path to citizenship. Remember, this is a globalist who is threatening to have 30 million illegal aliens run around and riot if we don't do what they say. You think it'll be better once there's another 30 million legalized? You think things will get better? Who would put up with this type of stuff? This is a globalist coup d'etat against this country. And it ruins the immigrants because you could get them here and get them into Americana and free market and liberty. And, you know, I mean, immigrants make great Americans. That's what America was based on. There are a lot of great people in Mexico, folks, a lot of great people in Poland, a lot of great people in South Africa, a lot of great people all over. I'll tell you, a lot of times, immigrants, I know them. If they're good people, they're better than the average spoiled, rotten American. I don't care whether you're black, white, or Hispanic. I mean, a lot of Americans are spoiled, rotten. And then those of us that work all the time basically pay for everything. But you sit here and look at the immigrants they want, man, it's a bunch of criminals. In fact, look at one of the main immigration leaders in Texas... It turns out what well, has been arrested for bank robbery. I've got that in my stack. I'll get into that after I go to calls. But the point is, is that's what I found. The local mayors we've had and the local city council people, their brothers will get busted being the top coyote. 
And by the way, these guys are above the law, folks. If you, I mean, I know one famous guy, he's been sent to jail now, he got too big for his bridges. He had a restaurant right next to another restaurant, and if your car parked one inch over the parking lot, at his parking lot, he would come up with a baseball bat and beat your car up or beat you and then not get in trouble. Yeah, there it is, immigration rights activist, alleged mesh mass bandit of, what is it, 19 bank robberies. He's been arrested for that. My point is, is that this is like the happy hunting ground. And the globalists need enforcers, so they're hiring all these mafias. But, but the Austin group, you know, it comes out all the time, and the charges get dropped. Oh, the city council person's brother was, uh, and the main immigration group, you know, was running uh, the coyotes. Yeah, and that ain't it. And was running this and that. And the cops have been told, leave these people alone. It's just like the banditos, and that's mainly, you know, it has a Spanish name. It was started by white guys. Uh, but the whole point is, is that that group is just a motorcycle gang, and it's above the law. Just because they don't lay down to people. They end up being in charge. The, I mean, it's like you lay down, you're a slave. You stand up, you run everything. Why? It's time for good people to stand up. <laughs> just, that's all I'm saying. This, this, this idea of bending over, worshiping government, worshiping thugs will deliver us to hell. And the forces of hell are running rampant all over the country, killing press. I mean, they've got David Gregory now. I, I got to play this before I go to your call since I mentioned it. Saying, hey, how about you get arrested for aiding and abetting Snowden? And there's a delay because he's in England via satellite. And, and, and the reporter is just sits back. I mean, they're all calling for it. The press should, as a gang, stand together just as Michael Hastings said. And that's why they killed him. That clip's coming up after calls. Good people stand together or they hang separate. It's like Rush Limbaugh. Rush Limbaugh's attacked me over the years, kind of distorting things I've said. Whatever. It's all fair game. I, I appreciate the coverage. And I know Rush reads our side. He covers the news, our news all the time. He doesn't give a credit. Michael Savage reads our news, gives it credit. I appreciate that. Sean Haney does the same thing. Glenn Beck does it constantly. And Glenn Beck says really mean lies about me, but I forgive him. Because I, I, I'm not in this to just to hate people anymore. But when Rush Limbaugh, they were trying to get him off the air again last year with made-up stuff, I went and bought advertising. And I'm just trying to lead by example, folks. If we don't hang together, we're going to hang separate. we got to put all the infighting aside as libertarians, conservatives, constitutionalists, real liberals that are, you know, really care about justice. We have to come together or it's all over, folks. We, I mean, I, I put out an article a few years ago. Glenn Beck said, I don't know why I've got macular de uh, degeneration. I'm going blind. And it's on record that the reason that that is massively increasing is aspartame. Aspartame causes you to basically have all sorts of leaky eye syndromes and degeneration of cells. It's on record. So I wrote an article with Paul Watson with all the studies in it. Drudge cared and posted it. They're like, hey, let us help you. Because he drinks Diet Coke on air. I've noticed now and I've seen him, he doesn't drink Diet Coke. But he wrote, he did, he made mean jokes about me with just trying to help him. I thought maybe you'd, you'd get your sight back or not lose more sight. And then you'd help your audience but you won't even tell them now. That you, so you've stopped drinking it, but now you won't tell people. And then you got mad at us trying to help you. I mean, what is that? I, I, you know, I, I just, I just refuse to be part of that. I'm going to skip this network break because I said I was going to take calls and I've got to get those minutes back. I'm going to skip this network break coming up in two minutes. Station should not be playing over this because this is a Genesis break. Uh, let's go to uh, John and then we're going to go to Jack. John in New York, thanks for holding. Uh, you're on the air. Welcome. Uh, yeah, thank you for taking my call. I have two important comments. First of all, are you aware, back on June 2nd, uh, 2002, Leslie Stahl, Stahl did this fascinating program on the 93 bombing. She interviewed the sole fugitive, Abdul Rahman Yassin, in a prison in Iraq. It's not important what he said. Of course, it's that unimportant thing, which what he said, which was the media made a big deal out of. But after that program, Tariq Aziz was interviewed, and she, he told Leslie Stoll that ever since he came to Iraq, we called up Americans and said, please take this guy from us. We don't want him. The only thing I ask from you is a signature, no lifting of sanctions. And when Leslie Stoll asked the White House... Sir, i got to be honest. I, I'm not understanding what you're saying. This happens sometimes. Uh, 
it, it's all running together. What are you talking about, about Iraq, a 60 Minutes interview? Yes, Leslie Stahl from 60 Minutes interviewed Tariq Aziz because the sole fugitive... Yeah, the former, the former foreign minister of Iraq, yes, who, yeah. was, who was living in England now. Yeah, and Tariq Aziz said ever since Rahm Yassin came to, to Iraq, we told America, please take this guy from us. The only thing we ask from, from you is a signature, like a FedEx delivery, and America said no. And so Leslie Stahl asked the White House, why did you refuse him and continue to refuse him? They told her to go ask the State Department, and when she asked the State Department, the State Department said, go ask the White House. So we have a few... But uh, for those that don't understand what you're talking about, because I can barely follow it, and I'm up on these things, what is the core? Who did they refuse? Abdul Rahman Yassin, the sole fugitive from the 93 bombing who was in Iraq. Yeah, I know. That came out years ago uh, that uh, our so-called government never wants the real terrorist because they run them. I mean, I, I I've quite frankly have never seen a big high-profile terrorist they don't run. And it always comes out. I mean, it comes out in mainstream news. British government ran 7-7. The MI6 agent managed the whole deal. They told him it was a drill, blew the poor guys up. Uh, we know the names of who did it. Uh, same thing on Boston bombing. We know they were under CIA control. They thought they were part of a drill. They were. I mean, it just goes on and on. It, absolutely, sir. Good to hear from you. Yeah, there it is. 60 Minutes, the man who got away. Thank you so much. Uh, let's talk to uh, Jack in California, listening on 1340 AM KOMY. Uh, you're on the air. Go ahead. I, I wanted to get your take on a couple of things. Uh, one is, uh, what do you think the likelihood is of uh, Obama trying to uh, stay in for a third term, either through martial law or, or whatever? And if you have any, uh, you know, word up from Lindsey Williams about that, or, or even if it, if, if the yeah, you know, orders, I'm not sure uh, about Lindsey Williams' source. Um, I mean, I mean, I know who it is, and I know it's a guy that's been in the inner circles, but. You know, the power structure itself isn't sure what it's going to do month to month. I mean, they have long-term plans. We know those. Uh, I mean, their agenda is pretty much public because they promote it. Uh, but um, I don't think Obama is going to try to stay in for a third term, though I think that could be in the cards. I don't think they're going to play those cards uh, just because we've politically destroyed him so much. They were planning to make him like a Lincoln to lead a civil war against America. That was clearly branded that way, but we've so damaged his brand. Even though he's a puppet, it was important to destroy his brand so that they couldn't use it uh, as a beachhead. Uh, so we're winning a lot of the fights right now. We're really hurting them. And as we give political aid and comfort to real Americans in government to speak out, to say no, to block things internally, as the Pentagon listens to us, the compartmentalized group shove it, uh, we're really getting the enemy uh, into check right now. Uh, now, they may pull something big, but it's, it, and, they, and they may shut the web down during a fake cyber attack or something like that as a pretext to try to reorganize. Uh, but it's just not going to work uh, long term. I mean, we really are getting the upper hand because we have right on our side. Uh, but uh, clearly, they've had Democrats introduce bills for Obama to be able to have a third term. They've promoted it. But I think they'll want to bring in some Republican stooge to kind of make people go back to sleep again, uh, to make it look like there's an illusion of choice. Uh, I just don't think Obama's going to get that, get that third term. That's what my gut tells me. But I think that was in the, in the front of their deck, and they were planning to play that card if you go back four years ago. Uh, all the preparations have been made for it. Uh, but the globalists are really in trouble right now. Um, so we're in the fight, my friend. Okay. The, the other thing was, um, the word treason is being thrown around quite a bit now with Snowden. Uh, and I just wanted to see what you thought about this giving money to the uh, Muslim brotherhood. I, I don't know that you could pin that down to Obama, but just that whole concept seems treasonous that you're, we're funding uh, our supposed enemy. Well, I mean, look, look, this is what's happening. And I appreciate your fine questions and points. Uh, thank you, uh, Jack. Our government has been taken over partially in 1913 to a larger extent in 33, and then massively with the 1947 National Security Act, allowing the criminal group to basically be above the law 
And then now they've dominated the nation. They've sold us out. They've bankrupted us by design. They've deindustrialized us to make us basically controllable to an extent through dependency. And now they're busy trying to further deindustrialize and bankrupt and collectivize and get Americans on the dole. And now they're openly trying to demonize patriots and liberty lovers and trying to sell the idea that, oh, Al-Qaeda isn't the threat, it's the gun owners, it's the returning veterans, it's the libertarians. And so we've kind of reached that twilight zone point where the vets and the gun owners and the conservatives and the pro-lifers are the bad guys and the NSA targets them and harasses lawmakers and, 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 and the NSA spies on the press and they're, and they're killing reporters and our government runs Al-Qaeda all over the world. Forget the Muslim Brotherhood. Our government is running Al-Qaeda and giving them heavy arms. They've been giving them heavy arms for two and a half years. I mean, they called two and a half years ago rocket attacks and, and small howitzer attacks and RPG attacks, bazooka attacks. I mean, to see those videos and photos of Al-Qaeda with U.S. laws rockets and U.S. truck-based howitzers and U.S. heat-seeking missiles. That's what's, see, that's what's freaking the military out, because the military knows what those weapons are. And they see the news like the general public doesn't. general public sees guys with Al-Qaeda flags, Al-Qaeda uniforms, and in the background a C-130 offloading them. And the public doesn't know what a C-130 is. They don't know that's a NATO aircraft. They don't know what that black Al-Qaeda flag is. Our military does. So for them, they speak the language, and they're seeing Al-Qaeda with laws rockets? It's not even RPGs. It's not even Russian. And the military is going, Alex Jones is right. It's that image of brigades of Al-Qaeda who then jump around going, after we kill Assad, we attack America. And we, we, we publish the videos, posted them over and over again, where you'll see a square of 10,000 people jumping up and down in Al-Qaeda uniforms with giant Al-Qaeda banners that says Al-Qaeda. Saying, we're going to destroy America. We're going to destroy England. And folks, they're going to let them attack us. Yeah, there's World Net Daily with an image of uh, Al-Qaeda with a modern Stinger missile. A heat-seeking missile. <laughs> That's pretty funny, actually. And, and, then, and then again, TSA walks over and goes, why don't you want to do the scan? And I say, because our government runs Al-Qaeda publicly. And everybody here knows that. And everybody's going, everybody's starting nodding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all a joke. And these radiation machines over here, not just the scanners, but these machines over here are going to kill you. How many of you have already gotten cancer in here? You know about the cancer clusters. And suddenly they go, just go, just go. Yeah, I know about them. I'm like, yeah. And I, and I, and I go over to the TSA person. And I go, I care about you. I understand they destroyed this economy on purpose so that you could only have this job, but it's not worth dying. Quit your job now. I mean, you, you, you think they wouldn't kill Michael Hastings of the Rolling Stone blowing his car up last week? When they ordered 200 plus giant chemical weapons dumps filled with U.S. and NATO sold chemical weapons, and they, because they shot video. The Marines went in and shot it, came out on 60 Minutes. And they ordered them, blow it all up. And then the Pentagon discussed, that, that's why Schwarzkopf really broke down and cried. And why they relieved Schwarzkopf of command. Remember that? That was one day after they blew that up and ordered, this all came out later, ordered Schwarzkopf to stand down. And when the detectors went off, over 20,000 of them. This is all 60 minutes. When the detectors all went off, they told them false alarm, and then Schwarzkopf said, keep your gear on. But they didn't want to admit that they'd blown that up because they wanted to get rid of the evidence, and they knew it was going to go through the gear anyways, but not as it wouldn't have been as bad. And so they blew it all up and said, take your gear off, and the troops took their gear off. And some had convulsions that were up close, and some died within days. And Schwarzkopf was ordered to cover that up.
And then, of course, they had that uh, bunker with a bunch of command people in it that argued about it. They blew that up and then said, oh, a lucky scud got launched after the war and killed 200 people. Remember that? That was a big deal with the military's like, you're going to blow up the chemical weapons and then tell them, take their gear off? Well, I'm not going to do that. You're relieved from command. Boom, blow up the command base. Oh, a lucky missile hit the a main command base. I mean, because the military's like, we're going to nerve gas everybody? You, you know, you, you've got to dispose of that carefully. That's got to be shipped to special incinerators. Do you think anybody's safe with globalists like this? Why would Bayer, knowingly for 11 years, ship out HIV and hepatitis and all their blood products in their factor eight? Came out in court. They knew and did it. Of course they did. That, that's manly to them to kill a bunch of people. Why do they design the GMOs to sterilize and give you cancer? Because they like killing you. I mean, have you figured that out yet? They don't just not care about killing Hastings. They like it. That feels good to them to kill people. Don't, don't you? You think groveling to these people who worship the Grim Reaper is going to protect any of you? Better start worshiping the God of life, not the God of death. All those that hate me love death. Jesus Christ said that. Our viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an eye beam when there's a 50 cal present. and arms, 50 cal ammo review, and more. Coming in the month of June to the Info War. Again, the reason I keep harping on the Camasilla base that was blown up and hundreds of others at the end of the Gulf War and the old 60 Minutes shows that came out a few years later and the congressional hearings is that it later came out in memoirs and pieces that Schwarzkopf was angry about it and that a large group of the command was angry about it and that that's why Schwarzkopf was relieved from command. But why didn't Schwarzkopf just go further? No, he just shut up and disappeared and let some books be written, but you never really saw him again. And then he'd cry at the parade and all that, and they'd say, we only lost a few hundred troops. Why is he crying all the time? Because he followed orders just like his dad had done with secret police in Iran. His dad helped train all the torturers and everything after the 53 takeover with the Shah. Schwarzkopf grew up in Iran, grew up in Iraq, grew up in Saudi Arabia. And he was not a truly evil person. Let me tell you, if you're not evil and you're told for whatever reason, blow up a bunch of nerve gas and let it blow into our troops, now, there it is, USA Today study, wind blew deadly gas to U.S. troops in Gulf War. That was all known. That's USA Today. That was all known, ladies and gentlemen, and Schwarzkopf freaked out about it. Just like they weren't allowed to use DU up until that war. They had DU folks at the end of World War II. You can read the studies. I've had the former head of the Pentagon DU program on probably 20 times, Dr. Doug Rocky. All those famous reports. They said we can't use this because it ignites going out the barrel. It contaminates for billions of years wherever it hits, and they break down how many microns it takes to massively reduce your life expectancy from the toxicity and the radiation. And again, I go off into this before I go to your calls because what happened to the people running our government by 1990? Oh, let's just blow up nerve gas. Well, the weather reports, that'll blow into Iraq, it'll blow into Iran. It was blown out to sea, it'd still be deadly. That's sarin and VX nerve gas. Those are some of the, that's the third biggest stockpile in the world. We sold it to him. We trained him how to use it. He used it on the Iranians. You blow that up, it's going to do it. But the, 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 the detectors will go off. These discussions all came out in Congress. The detectors will go off. The detectors will go off? Well, so what? Just tell them it's safe. Tell them there's no worry. Tell them there's nothing to worry about. Why would they do that? Why? 
because the people running this planet want to kill everybody. They're evil. Why have they thrown, depending on the numbers you look at, 20 plus are on record. Reportedly, it could be hundreds of military reactors that were thrown into the Atlantic Ocean 100 miles off the coast is where they do it, from Georgia to Alabama all the way up to New York. Why? Why throw reactors into the ocean? When you could just take them back and decommission them. Why not throw them into the ocean? The Soviets threw reactors into their lakes. Why? Why, why do that? Why not? They love evil, folks. They love the devil. Even if you don't believe in the physical devil, what is that? I mean, the guys are in there with their mouths open. They can type in whatever I say. And, oh, there's USA Today that they knew nerve gas blew onto our troops. Oh, you know, oh, there's articles about throwing reactors. Most of them are off the coast of Georgia. Why? In key fishing grounds. Why? 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 And the naive childlike public, oh, would they blow up Hastings? Uh, you know, oh, would they kill Aaron Schwartz? I'm going to fight this. I'm getting married. I'm feeling great about this. Owns a big, you know, company worth hundreds of millions of dollars. They go to his house and hang him. Because he was a real guy that cared about a free internet and justice and who'd beaten SOPA and CISPA. More than anybody, he led the fight. So they just went to his house and killed him. And see, if Hastings would have talked about how they may kill him, and if Schwartz would have talked about it, and if everybody else who's in danger would have talked about it, just like if we talk about false flags, it stops them from being able to do them. Or if we talk about the 2 billion bullets and the 7,000 armored vehicles and NORTHCOM trained to take us on, then there's a debate about it and the military has a debate about it and they know it's real and they say no to it and then it becomes a big political issue and is a no-no. See, then we have a debate about it. Like a debate about should Snowden be arrested? Is Snowden a traitor? Or is David Gregory a traitor against the free press and a piece of trash? Is Chucky Schumer a traitor and a piece of trash? Secretary of State John Kerry, a piece of trash, who's got so much Botox, he looks like the dad from the Munsters. He used to be a handsome guy. He looks like a zombie now. It's always, these people are a bunch of narcissistic trash holding on to their life so much they're trying to hurt other people. And thank God I'm not a coward, narcissist piece of trash like people like that. Thank God every day I'm not a servile, devil-worshipping trash lover. Thank God. God, I'm not on their side. Thank God I'm not with them. Thank God that I see clearly what they're up to. And that's the other thing. I look at the globalists and what a bunch of unhappy, twisted weirdos they are. And then I read about the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and how screwed up their families are. And just they are just unhappy people, so possessed by darkness that when they see you and your healthy, wholesome family, they want you dead. You know why they hate our troops? They know they're the best people in the world. Despite the fact our military has done so much evil, manipulated by the globalists, they know they're, the by and large, the best people we've got. And that they're a danger to these tyrants. And so after every war now, they shoot them up with deadly vaccines. It turned out, folks, the Agent Orange they sprayed, they added a neurotoxin to it, synthetic cobra venom. Don't believe me? I've had Dr. Rocky on. The declassified documents got declassified four years ago. They added synthetic neurotoxin to the Agent Orange. It was really nerve gas, and they called it an exfoliant, a defoliator. They were spraying our troops while they were spraying the Viet Cong. Just that, uh, this is so evil. Folks, they, if, if you're in the military, the New World Order is killing you with those shots. They're killing you with everything. They hate you. They hate your family. They hate the fact that you're not a coward like them. They also envy your strength. That's why they want to get rid of men and replace it with machines. They're only putting women in frontline combat to, just, to, to screw things up. They, they're going to destroy the institution of the warrior. They're afraid of you. Because in the spark of the warrior's heart is the defeat of this evil. A real warrior loves the innocent. 
and loves their tribe and loves their society and will lay their life down for their people. And the New World Order is threatened by you. You are a big blaring white light to them in their darkness. They don't like you. They want to extinguish you. And as soon as they can, as soon as it's robots and drones, within 10 years, you're obsolete, you're gone. You're going to be working on the machines. And they're going to line you up and give you shots of things that, that are actuated so that when you get out of the military, you're going to be debilitated. And then you're, you have to waive your rights to get disability. And then they're going to kill you at the VA. It's a nightmare, but it's a military plan by the globalists. And it's all on record. As horrible as this sounds, it's all on record. All you've got to do is give up your, your, your false conceptions, give up the propaganda, check out what I'm saying, and find out all of it's true. I'm risking my life because I don't have a future and my family doesn't have a future if we don't get out of this together. Let's go to your phone calls. Rod in France, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi, Alex. Always a pleasure. Um... Well, this wasn't my original topic, but since you're in that uh, on that topic right now, yeah, the the, uh, the depleted depleted uranium rounds that they use on the I remember speaking with a with a colleague of mine at uh, at a job I worked at, and he was in the Navy, and he said, uh, you know, they had these these Vulcan cannons, these real high speed cannons on the on the decks of the ships that would actually fire at incoming missiles at a very high rate of speed, and they would so use Aegis these system. rounds. Yeah, exactly. And, and they would use the DU rounds, and he said those cases would just be all over the place. And and you know, I I work in uh, in the uh, at a particle accelerator, and I know a little bit about this stuff. And the isotopes, uh, the size of the particles from these DU rounds are so small that even with a with a standard NBC suit, you wouldn't you wouldn't be protected from from these you know. Tiny, hey Rod, tiny, you kind of you kind of hesitated on that. So you work at CERN, huh? Well, no, I'm not at CERN. I'm at uh, I'm at Sackley uh, Synchrotron Soleil. It's an uh, it's a particle accelerator, third generation particle accelerator. Uh, so, why do why do they uh, why do they I, stop? I get to meet some interesting people. Yeah, I bet. Let me let me stop you there. That's what Doug Rocky said, and that's on record. <laughs> the, it's not just that it's radioactive. The particles are so small, unnaturally small, that once they get in your lungs. They just drop through the cells like a knife through butter and just absolutely fry you. Then your lungs try to off them and put them into the bloodstream, and then it kills your kidneys. That's why you have off-the-chart kidney failure in troops. Absolutely. Uh, the, the isotopes, it's neutronic radiation, and the, the isotopes that are emitted from those particles are not dangerous if you're at a distance from them. But once you inhale them, you are being constantly radiated. It's the point-blank range, exactly. neutronic isotopes. It's point-blank in your DNA, is what Dr. Doug Rocky breaks down. Exactly. Well, I'll go on to the point that, uh, that I wanted to make. Um, with the, uh, I, I read an article just uh, just here today that was on the uh, Liberty Crier uh, talking about the, the Boston Globe saying that the Department of Homeland Security has gone public with an admission that a, that an exercise was planned months before the Boston Marathon bombing that involved backpacks being used to detonate explosives by rogue terrorists. Yeah, and, and it was a Patriot group. And see, we yeah. they were going to blame a Patriot group. They had the guy, they announced it, and then they said, oh, then they had a bomb threat, shut down the building, and never heard about it again. And then they went to Plan B and burned some of their some of their patsies. Uh, but yeah, no, no, they were they were planning the whole time. Turns out the guys they burned were CIA young guys. They set up young playboys, and uh, they probably had a third or fourth group ready to set up as well. Yeah, pretty amazing that came out. Yeah, it's it's amazing, and and I think you already covered it uh, once. But it, I think sometimes it's good to uh, to to you know go back and touch on subjects that have already gone by because we, we start to lose track with it. There's so many scandals going on at this time. I mean, it's literally hard to follow up on stuff because there's just so much news. And uh, Well, I mean, that's what's also, frustrating uh, about Mad Al or others coming out and saying, how dare I say there was a drill? How dare I say these guys were with the government? I mean, it's in the news. They were sent to CIA training bases, especially the older brother. I predicted they'd kill their friends, and the FBI went and killed their friends. I predicted they'd kill FBI agents that weren't in on it, but were there. They have killed them now. Uh, I mean, I said there'll be a drill. There'll be a, and the whole thing came out. I mean, I know their MO.
And, 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 and you're right, it's so frustrating. Uh, so are you an engineer there at that cyclotron? Yes, I am. And uh, I'm actually uh, an engineer and a coordinator there. So I interact between all the uh, people who come in from all over the world. And I've seen some people, some government people come in there uh, quite a few times. Um, and I've spoken with a lot of people from the United States that use, uh, that use our synchrotron. And, oh, and the political diversity is rather interesting, but that's another story. Uh, the, the next question I want to ask you, if, if you don't mind, Alex, if you just give me another minute, is the, the Sarnev brothers, um, you know, the, the one who's, who's in prison now, is there any, does anybody have any news? Because we've kind of like lost, like I said, it's been lost in the shuffle of, of all the other things that, that are going on. Uh, has anybody been able to contact the mother? Or the I father? have been. I have been contacted uh, by lawyers and some pretty famous people that are trying to help the, the living brother, and they can't get through the public defender. They can't get through any of it. He needs to get a message out that 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 he wants to be represented. Uh, by an outside counsel so these people can get a hold of them. But then these people tell me, hold off before I talk about it and give specifics. So there's really nothing I can do. And and and, and it it's just I'm so overwhelmed trying to run this operation that I can't really try to then insert myself into the court case. Uh, it's kind of like uh, the Boston bomber investigation uh, is just a big black hole. And once the public moves on from something... It's hard to get them to look at it again. That's why right when it happened, we had to come out and say, if there's a drill, if there's a bunch of patsies, they'll be connected to the CIA in foreign exchange programs, yada, 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 so that then all that came out and then people listened. That's what caused that to be such a huge story. We got like seven times the normal traffic to the radio show and the websites, and it totally freaked the power structure out because we went in and blocked them point blank. And if anything gets me killed, it'll be that. I mean, they are just pulling their hair out. They've turned uh, all their operations against us. Uh, dirty tricks, uh, death threats, hit pieces in the press whenever we did that. Uh, so pray for us. God bless you. Good to hear from you. I mean, it is just devastatingly hardcore what's happening. We have a declared war on the free press, a declared war on libertarians and Christians with the NSA and the IRS. And the media is cowering to it, and if we cower, it's over. Speaking of that, I want to go to this Greenwald clip uh, with David Gregory on uh, NBC's Meet the Press, where he says, should Greenwald, Glenn Greenwald, be arrested for aiding and abetting Snowden, who exposed illegal spying? He's totally protected. He deserves a medal. And, of course, it's turned out now he's a Ron Paul supporter. And I've been told by people that know him that he's a listener of the show. So, Snowden, if you can ever get through to us, we'd like to have you on the broadcast. Uh, let's go ahead and go to this clip. Here it is. Um, to the extent that you have aided and abetted Snowden, even in his current movements. You have aided and abetted the New World you, Order, Gregory. Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime. You should be charged. Greenwald should not be charged. I think it's pretty extraordinary that anybody who would call themselves a journalist would publicly muse about whether or not other journalists should be charged with felonies. The assumption in your question, David, is completely without evidence, the idea that I've aided and abetted him in any way. The scandal that arose in Washington before our stories began was about the fact that the Obama administration is trying to criminalize investigative journalism. See, they're targeting the by press. going through the, the emails and phone records of AP reporters, accusing a Fox News journalist of the theory that you just embraced being a co-conspirator with felony. Oh, yeah, felonies, they're trying to sell this. Working with sources. If you want to embrace that theory, it means that every investigative journalist in the United States who works with their sources, who receives classified information, is a criminal. And it's precisely That's right. They are criminalizing the press here in America, folks. Think about this. And using the NSA and IRS to harass liberty groups. And they're trying to sell the idea now that, oh, we'll arrest anybody we want. Uh, we'll arrest the press. I mean, this is an authoritarian government. But the corporate whore press is on such a short leash, they're going along with it. Most of them are going, yeah, let's arrest Snowden. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, yeah, destroy the free press. We want to just be lapdogs. And that's why the Pentagon and the CIA and the White House are looking at just robot reporters where they just put in the disinfo and then different articles are churned out by a computer. They won't even need you anymore. You idiots. You idiots in the press.
Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants, fruits, vegetables, nuts, you name it. And the globalists have been going after gardening. They've been harassing people that have gardens in their front yards or their backyards. They've called for licenses for people to have gardens because you can't trust prisoners in the police state America to be able to grow their own food. That's why I've come to the realization that we need to become self-sufficient. You need to be informed. You need to have the Second Amendment to protect yourself. You need to be politically active to wake up others. You need to filter your water. But you also need to plant a garden. Even if you live in an apartment, you can do this. If you live in the countryside, obviously you can do it on a grand scale. There are so many green belts in areas uh, that humans don't even visit uh, nearby cities and in suburbs where people are now more and more planting their own little private gardens and meadows and off the side of the road. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest of times. The ARC All-in-One Seed Kit contains 70 varieties of 50,000 seeds of fruits, vegetables, medicinal, and culinary herbs. All ARC seeds are heirloom. Each type is labeled and sealed separately for ease of use and longevity. The Deluxe Emergency Seed Bank combines three of Emergency Seed Bank's top sellers. The Family Survival Emergency Seed Bank, the Medicinal Herb Seeds Pack, and the Culinary Herb Seeds Pack. We also have starter varieties of the Deluxe Seed Packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, and medicinal herbs and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. A little seed can grow a huge tree that produces fruit for up to 50 years. We have the best life bombs. That's what these are. We have the best weapons against death out there at the lowest prices waiting for you to lovingly plant them and lovingly grow them and lovingly eat them and share them with others. We will strike back against the New World Order and this is only one more initiative in our fight against them. So please join us at InfoWarsShop.com or you can link through at InfoWars.com at the InfoWars Seed Center. Here's an example of what I'm talking about, standing up, letting your voice be heard. All of us doing a little something every day, then the criminals can't threaten and kill all of us. It's common sense, and on that path leads a good future for our children. On the path we're on leads destruction. Uh, I, I know from Rick Linkletter and several other people that Bruce Willis is an off and on listener of this show and has seen my films going back at least eight, nine years. And I know that he gave an interview, I think it was Vanity Fair, and talked about the New World Order and how the same people that killed Kennedy are running things now, and now he's no longer a mainline Republican, that he's woken up. Why talk to Vanity Fair? Why not come on my show? And I'm not even really hitting Bruce Willis up. It's just an example that John Bowne out there has hung out with him and played with him and stuff. Why not go public? Why not have your voice be heard? You won't save the world, Bruce. But together we will. Take um, Mike Judge, been a listener for 18 years. We've been talking off and on the phone for years, finally hooked up, did an interview. Him speaking out against big government and tyranny is not going to save the world, but together it will. Mike Judge. It's just all of us have got to go public. And I know a bunch of other famous people. I'm not calling Bruce Willis out. Uh, I'm, I, that's why I get so mad at people like uh, Brad Pitt. Because I, I, I mean, like three or four times from different high-level people, starting with Aaron Russo. I was told that Brad Pitt was, you know, uh, watching his films, my stuff. He'd hung out with him some. You know, Russo put out a bunch of big movies with Eddie Murphy and stuff, and that he was awake. Well, now look at him running around with UN commercials, you know, running around New World Order. I mean, Brad Pitt knows what's going on and decided to, to, to you know, to go bat for the other team, folks. And I want to play this clip here. This is... Um, 
Hastings one week before his car blew up. Remember, he put out an email saying, I'm going into hiding. They're after me. I'm going to break my biggest story ever. Boom, his car blows up. And then we're weird to say he may have been killed. No, it's weird to not have a major investigation of this. This is what he said on the Young Turk show one week before his car blew up. And this is the kind of thing that scares the New World Order. Here it is. Obama administration has clearly declared war on, on the press. It's declared war on uh, investigative journalists, our sources. Sure. I think the only recourse to this kind of behavior by the government is to say back to the government, we declare war on you. And from this point forward, we should no longer, as, as a media, as a whole, cooperate in any manner uh, with, with, with the government in terms of when we're doing national security stories. We should withdraw all, all our cooperation and we should publish everything we know because it's a free press and it's not a free except for when the government tells me to do it press. And we've been, we've been way, too, way too easy going with these guys. We've let them get away with this for years. We've let them tell us what to print, what not to print. And I say, I say be done with it and everybody should just get together and, and, and fire Absolutely. back. No one else is going to defend the press. Nobody else is going to defend the press. Now, I'm going to go to break, come back, go to ship and some other callers. Then I'm going to just blitz through news all over the map. But let me just remind you, we either got to stand together or be run over. I mean, that's basic instinct for survival, basic instinct for liberty. The globalists have sold us on how to be morons and how to be slaves. You don't get ahead acting like a cowardly slave. And it's just time for the press, the media, other talk show hosts, everybody to really understand your families. None of us have any future if we don't turn this around. It's, it's, it's that simple. Where are you? Playing it safe is what's got us to this point. When everybody plays it safe, folks, the wolves take over. I'm looking for men here to stand up. By the way, if you want to support us, get the new film. You can get a free film with it, American Dream. When you get State of Mind, The Psychology of Control, to wake up your friends and family, I'm in the film. A bunch of other people are in it. Find out more at InfoWarsStore.com. Or call toll-free if you want to ask any questions or order over the phone, 888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsStore.com. Only place to order it, it is InfoWarsStore.com. We're the exclusive distributor. Get a PrisonPlanet.tv membership to see the nightly news and all my films. Five ninety five a month. That's 11 memberships for one price to share with your friends and family. PrisonPlanet.tv. I had tried everything. I'd cut back the amount of food I was eating. I was lifting weights and jogging, but nothing was working. My body was literally starving for minerals and trace elements as well as key vitamins. And as soon as I had that, I immediately could eat half of what I was eating previously and be satisfied. Now, there are hundreds of great products at InfoWarsTeam.com, but I want to point out the three that have helped me lose 37 pounds in just two months. Products like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Pollen Burst, and Rebound. When I started taking the Tangy Tangerine and other products every day, I lost more than 37 pounds in just two months. Now that's results. I want to challenge my listeners to go to InfoWarsTeam.com and to order just three of their products, and you will see the changes in the way you look, feel, and in your appetite almost immediately. Start your journey to health and wellness today. InfoWarsTeam.com we're going to go to Ship, Brendan, Aaron, Revold, Jared, and others here in just a moment. Then I'm going to get into the issue of national sovereignty, how nations are like firewalls in a building or bulkheads in a ship for water coming in, or firewalls as well. So that if one nation falls to tyranny, you have a chance to run somewhere else. Even though that nation may not be perfect or far from it, they don't have the personal beefs with you, the pogrom they want to carry out. And here's an example, Russia defiant, USA raises pressure. It's not USA doing this, it's the global crime syndicate that seized our nation. And they're so angry that this guy could run to Hong Kong or run to Russia or run to Ecuador. Running from one tyranny to another. Remember the father who had his kids taken for smoking marijuana, the engineer that was a listener? So he tried to run to Cuba and Cuba turned him back. Cuba loves taking people's kids. But when criminal regimes start fighting with each other, sometimes it gives you a place to escape. You don't want one big unified thing. Whenever that happens, heads are going to roll. It's not a good system. You want diversity. That's why you want 50 states. If one state's totally corrupt, like California, oh, man, I got gun news coming. It's going to be total news blitz. But let's go back to your call. Ship, thanks for holding. Uh, what is your point today, um, sir? 
Oh, well, hey, Alex, man. I just wanted to say what's going on to another Texas brother. Well, good to, good to have you calling in today, sir. What's on your mind? Oh, well, not much, man. It's just a lot of conditioning, 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 conditioning. You know, it's they, uh, with this uh, Hastings guy, you know, it, they're just showing us how brazen that they really are, that they can just say, hey, you know what? We can kill you. Pretty much, plain and simple. And uh, that's a scary thought. Well, I've seen a lot of car bombs and also mafia hits. When this first happened, I went and typed in mafia car bomb and looked at hundreds of photos in Italy and the U.S. and other places, and that's how they do it. Dynamite or C4 under the car or in the dashboard, and that's exactly what it looks like. That's what the witnesses said they saw. That's, that's so scary, man. And then, you know, to where that we're going is, is even worse, that we need to band together. We need... We need to have this unified front so that, you know, the truth does not escape and that we just get the message out to everybody. And you're doing a great job, man. Like, I listen to you every day, and you have woken me up. I saw you on Decoded with Brad Meltzer, and I was like, who is this guy from Texas, man? I got to look into him. And you woke me up, man, and I appreciate everything that you've done. You know, I really should do more mainstream TV. I turned down most of it, uh, but I had two people come to me this morning when I was uh, doing some errands separately saying, oh, I saw you last night or two nights ago on History Channel with that show about Masons uh, because millions of people watch those every time they air and then it makes them go find your radio show. You're absolutely right. I need to do more of that uh, because it's having a really good effect. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have entertained my own TV show. The problem is I don't have time to do that and the radio properly. Radio is is the is the key because yes, you might get a little bit more notoriety and, and get out, but the people that are at your core are spreading the message for you. And everybody that I can find that you know needs information or you know kind of open to facts that may not be out there as the mainstream as as they are or, or as they need to be for that matter. You know, like like the Snowden case, that guy. It's insane. I mean, that is just as out there as it could be. And most people are just like, what? Yeah, what notice now, I mean? notice it's not about the government illegally spying and using it on the press. That's why I love the fact that Greenwald brought that up. That's what we've got to be hammering. It's about how Snowden's a traitor. I mean, everybody knows the government's spying on people. At least people with the brains do. That's all he exposed is, yeah, uh... And by the way, it's private corporations. That's what they don't want known, that it's Google and Microsoft. They're all the ones lobbying to have government give them spy contracts for data they're already getting. I mean, the, uh, all the cable boxes, the connect boxes, the video game consoles, they're tracking you already. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. All right, I want to go right back to your phone calls for people that are patiently holding. And then I'm going to get back into NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden goes missing. Uh, and a bait and switch where they thought he was flying to Cuba. We're going to look at uh, some of the other world news, including political correctness news. Man accused of bias intimidation at concert arrested here in the United States. Uh, the Associated Press is reporting. And, and they're reporting it like it is a good idea. And then I have another story out of the National Post of Canada Slur forces comic to pay $15,000 for tirade of ugly words against lesbian patron after appeal falls flat. Folks, they're telling preachers they can't read out of the Bible now in Canada. I mean, Canada is an incredible uh, political correctness police state. I mean, what do you expect when you go see a dirty comic? I mean, they make fun of everybody. Uh, so uh, that's the kind of news stacking up here. And it says the Justice Department's looking at the man that waved a rebel flag at a concert. Well, I mean, what about all the racist stuff that Hispanics and black folks, vice versa, put out to each other and to whites and back and forth? The government actually promotes all this and then will act as the referee. And that's the political correctness going on 
where, you know, now if you're not for totally open borders why you're a racist, show your hospitality. Let everybody from the world come here and have their babies free and everything paid for and be above the law to show you're not a bad person. And then people go, but it doesn't make sense. They said I'm against government health care, which is actually written by the insurance companies to rip people off. I'm a racist and I'm against turning my guns in. I'm a racist. Remember, we heard that during the. And so now it's gotten so bad that even the politically correct are going, how's it racist? I don't turn my guns in. It's just a way to guilt you. And it's such, it's so incredible now that they've had cases. This, this reminded me because I see a caller on the board who says attacked by a black mob, where you see it in local news all over the country where it's so politically correct, groups of black folks beating up mainly whites at fairs and things don't even feel like it's a good thing. These are white people. We're going to beat them up. Just like whites used to think, well, these are black people, so they're inherently bad. We're allowed to get together as a gang and beat them up or hang them. Same brains, same people, different pigment, acting exactly the same way. It, because the guilt now with shows like Django and, and Machete and all this is, whites are inherently bad. You see it everywhere. The white devil, the white is inherently evil. Or the Jew is inherently evil. So Alex Jones is a Jew and secretly lives in Israel. I've never been to Israel, though I want to visit. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, that's one of the most incredible places in the world to go see. In fact, that, um, that's on my list. I guess if I ever go, I'll be very proud there that I've gone to see you know, such a historical place. And, that, and so that's the great slander. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. He's a Jew. A Jew. Like, oh, no. And you know what? I am Jewish. It's true. I am Jewish. Alex Jones is Jewish. Both my parents are Jewish. My whole family's Jewish. So there you go. I take your slander as an honor. I'm not Jewish. I'd be proud if I was Jewish, but I'm Jewish. There you go. And so, so it becomes this thing where inherently because of a color of your skin. I mean, they have African tribes. If the Muslim will kill the Christian, Christian will kill the Muslim, or the animist will kill the Christian. And it's always whoever they want to rob. One group gets together, gets a UN shipment of weapons. The UN goes, okay, go ahead and go slaughter all the Christians. They're the minority. Because of their culture, the Christians were able to build up something working together over the last 500 years in Rwanda. So they became the ruling class. And so you get to kill them all. So we can bring in a UN government. That's blacks killing blacks. But they find a reason to kill each other. Oh, that group, they worship the owl. We worship the, you know, the lion. So we're going to kill the owls. It's all gang garbage. Crips bloods. You wear a blue bandana. I wear a red bandana. I'm going to kill you because you wear a different color. People can have the exact same color of skin, have the same genetic background. They will put on a different hat. They'll wear a different, that's what humans do. It's like teams, Cowboys versus the Steelers. Redskins versus the Dolphins. It's tribalism and the globalists dress us up in the tribalism so that we feel good about each other when we kill each other. And they artificially sit there and manipulate it. And, and I just can't get over the media saying, the so-called media ganging up on other members of the press like Glenn Greenwald saying he should be arrested for illegal NSA spying that they admit's illegal, that they've been caught doing. But, and then all he's saying is you're being spied on when Connect admits they're watching you and listening to you, and it goes back to Microsoft. I'm going to get to that after calls. When Apple and Google and AT&T, all of them have patents that are decades old, and they're now doing it, admitting it, and there's bills introduced trying to stop it. The two-way cable boxes, all of it. I've got news on it today. I mean, look at these headlines. Microsoft is behind Mystery Data Center in Iowa. Wired.com. There's another one. Connect may violate proposed we are watching you legislation in the U.S. brought forward by Congressman Walter Jones. A Republican and Democrat, Mike Campanano, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. A Democrat, good for the Democrat from Massachusetts. And it goes into that these consoles are admittedly watching and listening to you. I mean, what, are we going to arrest Walter Jones because he's got a bill saying, hey, they're already doing this, let's make it illegal? I mean, that, he's admitting we're being spied on. 
Microsoft is the NSA. Apple is the NSA. Google is the mega NSA founded by the NSA. They're not going to let the government run that. It's all for the private groups to have it. Over $100 billion a year, one way or another, going to these, these systems, building the infrastructure. You pay to be spied on, and they admit they've got hundreds of thousands of analysts to listen and watch and then play this game of, we're not watching you, arrest Snowden, he's a traitor. When in plain view, they're violating the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, the whole nine yards, and then they want to scare everybody, they'll probably kill him, folks. Or tie him up naked for, you know, months and months till he looks like a concentration camp victim like Bradley Manning, who's another hero. Bradley Manning would sit there and watch him target whole families with drones and make jokes as little kids blown in half would crawl around in the dirt. And he said it was like watching a kid torture bugs with a magnifying glass. He couldn't do it anymore. A guy deserves a medal of honor, not to be made fun of all day. Oh, look at him. He's a little gay runt. He deserves everything. I hope they torture that traitor. What, for releasing a bunch of cables with... Going back 30 years with Henry Kissinger talking about what a criminal he is? Stuff like that? Don't worry, we'll bring down America once we get the police state in place. That's the stuff in the cables. Just shoving us all around, pushing us around. And then they just sit there dominating, 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 dominating. Looking at those photos of him weighing like 90 pounds and deathly white with those big stupid meatheads shoving him around and stuff. You can see those special army uh, sheep dip type contractors. All think they're so tough. Take some more shots, boys. Give your kids some more shots, too. See how tough you are. We'll see how tough you are. We're going to find out how tough you all are. Let's go ahead and go to Brendan in Wisconsin. You're on the air. Thanks for holding. Hey, Alex. I have uh, one short comment about citizen journalism and then two major points, both related to the subject of keeping uh, Michael Hastings' ideals alive. Uh, the, regarding citizen journalism, uh, thank you so much for keeping the fact, uh, hammering home the left-right paradigm, the false left-right paradigm, and, the, and this supposed tribalism alive. You really nailed it, and actually, if people go back and look at um, uh, George Carlin's uh, uh, comedy skits since 2000, he was talking about that. Um, and I just wanted to say that the people at GCN and the awesome writers, reporters, producers, and support staff wouldn't be doing that, what they do with you, if they didn't care about truth and freedom. Um, but moving along to um, uh, the Hastings topic, um, uh, I'm not a YouTuber, and, and, and because I've been told that I have a, a, a face for radio and a voice for print, but um, I did go out over uh, the last uh, five days and talk to some of my friends who are technicians, two of whom have worked on Mercedes-Benz for a long time, one of whom is a certified tech with BMW, and I asked them, I just showed them the photos, I didn't say what it was from, and I said, what would cause this to happen? Here are the photos post-crash, during, during crash, post-crash. Here's the engine. Uh, some people, you know, varying distances away from the crash. And they said that um, barring basically 70s, uh, like Italian, you know, Fiat Spiders and, and Alfa Romeos and stuff like that that are kind of more loosely bolted together, they said that that would require an offset compound collision involving velocities over 100 pr miles per hour. In other words, if you're if you're on a two-lane highway and you veer, and, and that would expel an engine and transmission, maybe in older cars. Now we're talking about a re really recent top-of-the-line Mercedes. These have crumple zones, uh, crash zones that are designed to absorb the impact and stay in the vehicle and never would be expelled. That's no, no I've, I've, I've seen the mechanics everywhere saying car bomb. I mean, he said, they're after me. I'm going into hiding. I've got the biggest story ever uh, on the corrupt government. And then and he says, we're at war with them and the car blows up. Uh, and, and, and again, it's all these other deaths. I hear you. Good to hear from you.
More calls straight ahead and then a bunch of news. Aaron, Revolve, Jared, Damien. We'll get to all of you straight ahead. Remember our website. It's InfoWars.com. A lot of breaking news right now at InfoWars.com. Now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.